Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Turnbull from Michelle Turnbull Counselling um, and Mel has invited me here to have some conversations with you all today around um, the topic of suicide. So I just want to acknowledge that this is a very sensitive um, topic and a difficult conversation to have and also just to um, say that if anything that we talk about today brings up um, difficult emotions, feelings or memories for you to please access support um, after watching this video. So you can do that either by contacting Mel or I or we will put some numbers of Lifeline and other supports, 24-hour um, supports that you can connect in with after the conversation. Mm -hmm. So please also just take care of yourself if you need to take breaks during this conversation, you know, step out, come back to it. Um, we did decide not to live to actually record, which is probably a good thing because you can pause um, and step back into the conversation whenever you're ready. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what led me, Michelle, to want to chat together is, yeah, parents that I come across have um, commonly said things uh, like, I don't want to put ideas in my kid's head. Mm -hmm. And what I love to do is to work backwards. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so when we feel like that, usually that's like based on a fear, isn't it, that, yeah. um, that things are just going to go pear-shaped. But if we think about what we do want them to have um, on board for whatever they encounter through life, whether it's their own mental health or, um, yeah, the, the encountering of um, suicide as part of the community, mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, then we're, we're better placed to be making decisions for how we'll proceed. Mm. Mm. And, I, and I hear that a lot too, people being worried about putting it in, in someone's head if they ask the question. Um, I'm also a teacher at TAFE and teach around suicide and so even adults um, are worried about asking other adults and having the conversation at that level. So there is a lot of fear around that. So I think it's really important to know that you won't put the idea in somebody's head. It's not something that you can implant into somebody's head. If the thoughts are there for somebody, they're already there. You won't create them just by having the conversation. What you will actually do is acknowledge the thoughts if they are there. So you will, the person will probably feel relief. Um, and in a lot of training that I do um, with people, we really encourage people to ask the question, you know, have you had suicidal thoughts? Um, are you thinking of killing yourself? Um, so being really quite upfront with the language mm. around how we talk about suicide. Because sadly, it is a tragedy in our community that eight people suicide um, every day in Australia. That's a lot of people. So if you're good at maths, you can do the maths around how many people per year. Mm. So your children will come in contact with conversations around suicide at some point in their life. And like all the topics, we want them to have quality information and we want them to have... Um, a base that they can come back to and feed regularly on that information as they move into the next, um, um, mm. you know, developmental milestone, don't we? So yeah. that they can have a more advanced conversation. So um, just knowing generally, um, if, yeah, um, if smaller kids can understand it as, um, yeah, someone's, like, brain can get sick mm -hmm. in the same way that their heart can get sick, mm -hmm. um, that and that can mean that they then, um, yeah, they aren't able to, um, yeah, like want to continue living as much as they mm. want to not be in that pain. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, and that's um, really the wording good language. Is, yeah. um, it's hard to come up with, but there's an article that I'll post. Mm -hmm. It's a, a PDF. I'll put that up, put the link to that up. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, like I didn't love all of them, but, there, you mm. know, there's the tone within that of how we can mm -hmm. um, do that. But yeah 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 but in terms of setting kids up to understand that it's a thing and that it happens mm -hmm. and that it's um you know it's got plenty of stigma ar around it which um we usefully and unusefully exacerbate mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we we want to be really respectful don't we mm -hmm. about um suicide so we do things like um have trigger warnings on videos and posts and things um it also sets that up to mean that it's um, it's something um, huge and big, mm. well, that, and it is huge and big. I don't mean mm. the huge and bigness of it. I mean the um, the tabooness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, there is a lot of stigma around suicide, and mm. a lot of um, people that I see who have lost family to 
suicide, it's such a complex grief to mm. talk to work through because there's the shame attached to it mm. and the fear of other people not really knowing how to talk about it. Mm. Um, and those worries about how do I now talk to my child about the fact that this family member has suicided, what language do we use? And I mm. like what you said around the brain getting sick. Um, you know, cancer's hard to talk about too. Mm. and Heart disease is hard to talk about too, and suicide um, is hard to talk about too. Mm. So if mm. we can put it in with all of those difficult griefs mm. um, that we face in life, that does take some of the stigma away from it. And the shame that people feel like perhaps they've done something to contribute mm. um, or not done enough. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, the important thing for the kids is to know that they're like there's a lot of change going on but that they're safe they've got yeah. um adults alongside them that they're um loved they're not to blame they're free to grieve as mm. they need to so everyone um grieves yeah differently and um kids can sometimes show it in ways that we feel awkward about mm -hmm. so um it's really important not to shut shut them down if it's a useful expression of their yeah. their grief yeah. um and that it, that they're not going to always feel like this, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which we're we're moving between the topics of mm. setting them up with an understanding of um, suicide, but also um, being ready for if you know and and death. So mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. so um, having available to them, um, you know, solid information mm. that matches how we look. Mm -hmm. Cause I I hear. Um, parents deliberating about what they'll tell kids and they they tell them things like the dog's going to sleep and he won't ever wake up and then mm -hmm. that same night they want that child to go to bed and happily go to sleep <laughs> mm -hmm. not realizing that that child's probably even if it's only in the recess yeah. of their mind wondering um might I never wake up mm -hmm. like is this a thing mm -hmm. um yeah and and it, yeah. it also doesn't match that the parents probably upset but they're giving yeah. Um, words that are light, like we, yeah. if we give light words but we look upset, then it's, yeah. what's that called? That's a counselling name for that, I'm sure. Um, I a guess mismatch. what we're, yeah, and we're yeah. trying to soften something that is not soft, aren't mm. we? Like mm. trying to find some really soft, gentle language for mm. really tough topics. Yeah. Um, and really, we should just be using the facts that yeah. people die and, yeah. um, and just, yeah, age. Age appropriate, digestible yes, chunks of information that um, they can do something with mm -hmm. and ask the next piece that they need to know. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, with, um, with suicide, I think, yeah, I think using that language, like that, so that the person has died by suicide, and not to use language like commit suicide, because mm. if we use language like commit Unsuccessful suicide, suicide. Yeah, like kind of. Mm like they've committed a crime. Yeah. So the language is to say they've died by suicide um, and and talking about perhaps there are always unique reasons for why someone dies by suicide. So it may be mental health, it may be depression, it might have been that or it might have been circumstances that something really tragic happened to that mm. person. But really, I guess it's providing space with kids to have tough, conversations and them knowing mm. that you're able to sit through tough conversations because yeah. there will always be hard conversations to have and I think we all know that if a secret was kept from us mm. as kids then we kind of knew something yeah. was going on like you would know if you're not silly no so body language doesn't match yeah so yeah. kids will <laughs> tune in to something if you know if you've experienced yeah. a suicide in your family um, and people are trying to keep that from the kids. The kids are very aware that there's something really tragic yeah. going on. So honest, yeah. understandable chunks of information for their age. Obviously, yeah. what you tell a five-year-old is different to a 10-year-old and a 15-year-old. Mm. Um, yeah, but facts yeah. and honesty, I think, yeah. is definitely. And then you're not needing to make all your phone calls in the pantry. Like yeah. you can be having the phone calls where the kids are, you know, hearing some of it if it's... Yeah. You know useful and th they're understanding that you're sad because you miss someone that that you really loved or mm. or or that you didn't like it's mm. yeah complex mm. um yeah. with grieving but um yeah they they just understand that yeah. it's or well, as yeah. best they can yeah. 
Yeah. And they're not left to make make up stories or feel like somehow they were to blame or mm. um, somehow responsible. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's the way that kids feel, mm -hmm. isn't it, then um, more than what's said. So people get caught up in getting the words right, um, I've noticed. And if the essence is about how the child feels, that they're settled enough because they have enough like of you available to them because we also are less available to the kids if we're telling a white lie and then needing to um you know keep putting the jack in the box every time they want to ask something because we can't we can't build more on a white lie like mm -hmm. we yeah if we give a little bit of truth then we can build yeah as they need it and yeah. so um so yeah then we're not detached in mm -hmm. the same way yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you're connected around those difficult conversations. Yeah, and, yeah. and then the conversation that's open is, what do you need next? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, like, how cool is that as a little person that has, um, you know, all this change going on with someone asking mm -hmm. what they need next? And mm -hmm. that's really hard to do, isn't it, mm -hmm. when you're grieving yourself? Oh, yeah. I yeah. Think there's nothing harder as a parent if you're going through your own grief and then having to hold your children's grief and yep. balancing those two experiences super hard yeah 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 so that would that would hopefully burn like heaps of calories <laughs> <laughs> i think you need to get a lot of support if that's yeah, the case yeah, like you need yeah, to get yeah and identifying you need to be resourced who is it yeah, yeah so that you yeah. can resource your child and yeah for some reason these things happen and we we just go into that i can do it like mm. i mm. i don't want to bother anybody um which mm. if we know that that's normal then that helps us when it comes mm. to know that, you know, hey, maybe I'll do that and um, maybe that won't be useful. So, mm. yeah. yeah. Um, um, if I was talking to my son about this today, he's 11, and, and he was saying, oh, what are you going to be saying? And I was saying the types of things that mm -hmm. get really tempting to say to kids, mm -hmm. um, like that, yeah, parents often tell me that they tell, tell their kids these things. And he's like, oh, yeah, right. And I said, it's just easier, isn't it, if you tell, like, it straight up from the beginning. And he's like, yeah, mm. like, why, why wouldn't you? Because, mm. and so it was good to hear from him that it wasn't like, oh, yeah, I needed to be protected from those yeah. big concepts. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, yeah, it's, um, yeah, like, it's, yeah. yeah. And they, they must be talking at school about mm. it because I was, I mentioned it yesterday and then I just mentioned it as suicide and he said, um, when are you doing your video about suicidal thoughts? Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, so that's okay, um, some language. That's that he some has. language he's picked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, around. So you know, it's it is. Mm -hmm. We are moving mm -hmm. yeah. from this. Um, yeah. Shut it down. Keep it in a box. Yeah. Um, and then it won't cause anyone any problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully. And and I th I think schools are getting better at perhaps having these conversations in a really sensitive mm -hmm. way. That yeah. Um, and helping kids to develop some language around it mm. so they know then how to get help if it if it happens to them if those thoughts start to yeah. visit them at some point in their life that they have a connection to I remember that conversation and I remember yeah. that this is this is a sign that I need to get support and that's where we're headed isn't it like we really want that to be as part of our parenting the conversation about suicide the supporting them should it happen mm. but then supporting them through all that to know that mm. it is a thing it's um there's services and help and things that can can help mm -hmm. and um we can't we don't get to have that conversation if we just um um hide the the truth from kids yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah and that's a pretty ordinary thing to um get to a ripe age and not have had access to if mm. um just as they do um yeah, mm. yeah, suicidal thoughts, mental health yeah. um, leads to that. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So, um, so to, to kind of develop those skills, I'm thinking, you know, to develop those conversations, I think like what you're saying is right, to kind of start having those conversations early, really acknowledging the truth if it does happen in your child's childhood that you really face those difficult conversations and have them. And then hopefully once they're in their teens, if um, because I think from about 13, 14 onwards, then the risks for young people suiciding mm. are high. Not high, but they're mm. higher than when they are children, yeah. is what I mean. Yeah. 
Um, so I think it's something between 15 and 44. It, suicide is the leading cause of death. Yeah. And yet we worry about being jumped by strangers in the park. Like, yeah. And we worry about all the stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, suicide yeah. and motor vehicle accidents. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. They are but what it's take good us to out. know that yeah. there's things that you can do to prevent that. You know, there yeah. are lots of yeah. things you can put into place yeah. to provide safety for kids around their mental health and, you know, making sure they're connected, making sure they have that language, making sure that um, I think once people start to experience that sense of helplessness and hopelessness and they're going down that really dark tunnel of hurting mm. um, and then not getting help around that, then our risk increases. And our in decreases, doesn't it? Like So our in while they're in that naught to however, mm. like mid early teens yeah so all the beautiful stuff that parents are doing to connect mm -hmm. to have their kids feel like they matter um yeah to have a sense of um like what's it what, what is it when that, like an accomplishment that you're mm -hmm. that you've got things that you're moving forward to yeah. and Achieving. Yeah, yeah yeah mastery and yeah. um yeah so all that great stuff um ups our odds but it never mm -hmm. it never immunizes our kids but it stacks the odds that they mm. um, will dodge that. But yeah. 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 I, and my kids are teenagers now and um, we've, we've experienced a couple of suicides in their teen years of friends. Mm. Uh, and it's super tough. It's super tough because I think people, you know, one, it's hard for kids to mm. process that in mm. their teen years, the magnitude of grief and the magnitude of that person just disappeared without mm. there being any preparation yeah. leading up to that. We didn't know the person was sick. So mm. the grief is quite unique in that sense in that it's a shock. it comes with the shock and the trauma as well as the grief. Yeah. Um, so just being aware of that need to continue having conversations um, with young people through that time for quite a long time you know yeah. keep checking in to keep, yeah, yeah keep saying how's that going and the little kids don't understand the permanence of mm. death so they you know they need to be revisited so that they know yeah. that it is it is a forever like yeah. even though the word forever they get mm. they don't get mm. ever ever yes yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And there are lots of different unique ways of dealing with grief. I mean, some people will work really hard at keeping that person alive in other ways and remembering them with yeah. photos and yeah, yeah. celebrations and um, acknowledging that the person was unwell um, and they've died, but, you know, let's still celebrate the life that they had. Yeah. Um, and other people might have their spiritual beliefs around death and dying. So each family will be unique around that grief process yeah um and we could probably do a whole other session on i know <laughs> we went to a funeral last thursday for a family member and um it was in sydney so the drive down there was really good mm -hmm. to have that time to not talk the whole way but to be like yeah i'm not sure if they're going to have an open or closed mm -hmm. casket so just so you know when we get there the reason that sometimes they have it open is because sometimes people like that chance to say goodbye and um no one will have to go and mm -hmm. um, say goodbye that way, but that may be it may be um, mm. something that is there. And so just just talking about the yeah, yeah you the know process. And I love tying it up with um, weddings. Like I noticed that I just kept referring to you know how at a wedding we have to like get dressed up, mm -hmm. well at a funeral we have to get dressed up, and um, at a christening dressed up, um, birthday parties dressed up, and mm -hmm. and then. Um, and then we do certain things in certain order. So you go to the wedding, then you go to the reception. Mm -hmm. Well, at the funeral, you go to the this and then that. Mm -hmm. So if we keep putting funerals alongside something else that's an important um, it's a celebration, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. it's a remembering celebration. Ceremony, uh, yeah. yeah. Yes, the ceremony of it. Then it just puts it in the same basket mm -hmm. and is not mm -hmm. this yucky blur mm. that um yeah i met an adult recently who hadn't had anyone pass away until he was 18 and he had a friend and his nana mm -hmm. that he had funeral for, funerals for on the same day oh, wow. and so mm. yeah you don't get the you don't get the warm-up gig yeah which um yeah. which yeah. you do when a pet passes away and you mm -hmm. um you do a good job of helping your kids grieve that and then they yeah. Um, grieve other things well. Yeah. So what I want to wrap up with, if are you yeah. ready to wrap up? 
um, is, yeah, what did you need? So if we're thinking about, we started with, we don't want to put ideas in our kids' head, mm -hmm. but let's finish with, um, what did you need? The first time um, that you had someone um, pass away, what was it that you came up um, short on or that you didn't know or a skill that you didn't have? Um, because that's a good start for thinking about how you want to talk to your kids about um, yeah, the mm. grieving process and mm. um, understanding things better. And it puts you in like a younger person's shoes to think that way. Mm. Mm. Um, that's a good question. Yeah. 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 And also I'm thinking what, you know, if you have lost someone through suicide, you know, what was helpful for you mm. in having those conversations? Were, were there things that people said or did that you really connected to? Um, and perhaps sharing that with other people so that we're mm. filling the community with helpful, supportive um, ideas around suicide and death. Yeah, mm. and that's our way forward, isn't it? Mm. Oh. Yeah. Michelle, thank you again. Thank you, Mel. <laughs> thank you for the invitation. And again, remembering to please connect if uh, this conversation has raised any concerns um, for you or feelings that you need to just process more with somebody. Please yeah. let us know. Yeah. And we can be of assistance or link you, link yeah. you in, help you find um, what it is that you are needed. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks again. See you.